Hello, I hope you're well and welcome to this month's reading vlog. So my room is in a bit of a tip because I am currently packing for a long weekend. It is just going to be me, a cabin in the Catskills, books and wine, and I'm so looking forward to it. I am so looking forward to unplugging, but I'm currently in the process of packing so that I can leave this afternoon and I've packed a lot of books. I know I've packed more books than I could possibly read, but I'm still nervous. Like, what if I don't pack the one book that I want to read? This is a bookworm's problem, and I'm sure that all of you can relate, so I wanted to show you my priorities. These are my priorities. I have two bottles of wine, and if this would stay out of the way, basically my whole July TBR that I haven't read yet, Drums of Autumn, Still Life with Meredith, Woo. The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone, The Little Stranger, War Queens, Lamplighter, and that's it as far as books, but then I do have audiobooks, and I am not, I'm not going light on those either. So I have three that came in all at the same time. So there's The Power by Naomi Alderman, The Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows, and also Circe by Madeline Miller, which came in a lot earlier than I anticipated. I have way too many books for like a four or five day vacation, but you know what? YOLO. You only live once, and I'm just gonna have a really big bag of books and look like a crazy bag lady. It's fine. It's fine. But anyway, gonna go finish packing and doing all that stuff, and I will check with you later. Hi! Checking in because I've arrived at my little cottage getaway, my home away from home for the next few days, basically until Tuesday morning. It is now Friday afternoon and I figured I'd show you guys around a little bit because this is like the cutest little Airbnb I have ever seen. So yeah, this is the first floor which has the kitchen area. And I mean, look at the details. Look at the like antique artwork up there, like super cute. If it weren't like a bajillion degrees here, I would have on this little fire, but it's like a bajillion degrees, as I just said. Um, and then over here, you have the little table, pardon my car keys, um, a little couch. And I was noticing, because I already did a quick walk through the place, that they have books everywhere. So they have these books here, a couple of board games, but I'm here by myself, so that does nothing for anyone. Um, but yeah, gonna keep walking around. These really narrow steps to the bedroom area which I've already turned the air conditioner on for. Um, but, but there's a chair, the bed, and clawfoot bathtub. This is just begging for me to take a bubble bath in at some point. It's probably gonna happen, truth be told. Um, so the, be the bedroom is pretty simple, pretty clean. Um, but again, here are these cute little books. So yeah, this will be home away from home for the next little bit. I am going to unpack my stuff and oh my God, where did this come from? Um, anyway, I am going to unpack my food because I brought a lot of groceries with me so I could make my own food um, and then just settle in. It is hot as hell in here right now. So hopefully with the air conditioner on, on both floors, it'll cool off pretty soon. But in the meantime, unpacking time. Wow, my hair is a mess. <laughs> 
but that will soon be rectified because I just drew a bath in that glorious clawfoot bathtub that I have serious envy over and I'm just gonna sit in the tub and read until I turn into a prune. That's basically my plan. But I figured that I would talk about the first book that I'm trying to read during this like reading long weekend getaway and it is Still Life with Meredith by Anne Lewinson. Um, and this is actually one of the books for the Tarot Readathon. I think this is for Page of Pentacles, which is to read the shortest book on your TBR. I think that's what this one is for. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it is the shortest book literally on my TBR. It is under 100 pages. I think it's like 87, 88 pages. I have zero idea what this book is about and even the kind of blurb on the back doesn't really make it clear. There's someone who is waiting for their roommate to return and I think the roommate is an artist but they talk about how the main character is like ruminating about the mating habits of different species and discoursing with Danish still light, Danish? Dutch still lives and some psycho psychoanalyst and sex? I don't really know. It. I have a feeling it's going to be very, very experimental. So we will check it out um, and I will report back. I'm pretty confident that if it's not a complete suck fest, <laughs> um, that I should be able to finish it tonight if I really want to. Might even be able to finish it in the bath. We'll see, um, but I'll report back once I have some details for you. I'll check in later. So, I don't know what I just read. I just finished reading Still Life with Meredith. It took a couple of hours. It's only like 87, 88 pages long. But I feel like my brain is short-circuited or I have just really experienced a mind fuck of a book. Um, but that being said, I think I liked it. I think I might have enjoyed it. I, my brain is still processing. Like I literally finished this book not even five minutes ago. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. It's definitely dark. It's definitely experimental. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but I don't know that there's really a plot going on here. Or, and if there is a plot, it went clear over my head, or it's so like abstract and vague that you just miss it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this, this book. So, it's very conversational in tone, um, it's effectively, it kind of feels as though the protagonist, the narrator, is writing a diary, so there's something very intimate about it. Um, in fact, it's supposed to be like a book that she is writing, and funnily enough, probably on very intentionally, um, her roommate Meredith often tells her that there's no plot um, to the story that she's writing and so there's something a little like self-aware about that but the narrator is literally living in a storefront that Meredith this artist has turned into ooh, what's going on here has turned into like an artist studio slash apartment Sorry, my eye is wigging out right now. Um, the book is not going to be for anyone who is uncomfortable with talk of sex. Like, the main character is really into psychoanalysis and Freud and spends a lot of time talking about that. Particularly Marie Bonaparte, who I didn't realize was an actual historical figure. She is related to that Bonaparte um, and has ties to Freud, um, but she basically had this like study and this sort of genital operation um, that comes up time and time again in the book. 
and there's a lot of talk of Freud and psychoanalysis kind of woven throughout um, because it's of such interest to the main character. Um, there are a lot of stories of kind of the main character's sexual exploits and that sort of thing. There's just a lot. And on top of all of that, there's also just like reflections on Dutch art and like art in general. And it's, it's a lot. Like it's a lot for a really, really short book, but there's something about it. Like there's something that is really engaging about it. And I don't know if that's because from like my school days, I did read and study some Freud as it pertained to like cultural history in the 19th century. And again, part of it kind of filtered into my own thesis senior year. But there is something really engaging about this book, even without it not really having a plot that I could discern, um, but just kind of seeing the inner workings of this character's brain. It's not stream of consciousness, but the way that her mind sort of works and connects all of these different things, whether it's psychoanalysis or her job or her sex life or Dutch paintings or this cat that her roommate has left her to take care of or like these like magical realism moments that are kind of sprinkled in and make you think like what the hell am I reading which is kind of how I felt the entire time but I think I liked it I I feel like I need to sit with this one a little bit more I think I liked it that's where I'm gonna leave it um, but since I finished that book I'm gonna put in my points for Team Swords with the Tarot Readathon, we're winning with both trophies. I'm kind of like shook by how much we're winning by, so yay, go team! Um, but I'm going to drink a glass of rosé because I am on vacation and I am that basic bitch, and I'll probably watch some TV and then call it a night and start with another book. We're off to a a++ start of my reading weekend. One book down, however many more to go. So I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Bye. perfectly straight. I've literally made like a tripod out of a cushion and a rolled up oven mitt. So I have no idea how it's gonna look. We're just gonna go with it. We're kind of roughing it this weekend. Um, but I wanted to check in because it is Saturday morning and I've spent most of the morning reading. Um, and I plan to go into town for a little bit because I hear there's a very cute bookstore there. But I did want to give an update because I started to read The Lamplighter by Emma Stone. I believe the X is silent, but I could be wrong. <laughs> um, so this is a book for the Tarot Readathon for the prompt that's to read a mystery or a thriller. Originally, I had just I had said that I would go with The Mitford Murders. Um, by Jessica Fellows, but I wasn't feeling it. And I've had this book on my physical TBR since it released. It was one of my anticipated releases at the beginning of the year. So I figured I'd use this instead. I'm about 100 pages into it. And the whole kind of crux of the story is that it's inspired by this event that happened in the early 1900s in Scotland. So there were these three lighthouse keepers on this like remote lighthouse, I think near or in the outer Hebrides in Scotland. And they just like mysteriously vanish without a trace one day and no one knows what happened. And there were all these other things um, that were kind of suspicious. Like the door I think was bolted from the inside. Um, some of the clocks all had stopped at the same time. And it's been this mystery 
basically since that time. So this book is inspired by this, but it's actually set primarily in 1972 and 1992, 22 years later. Um, these lighthouse keepers have vanished, same as the ones from actual history. And now 20 years later, you have this author who wants to kind of get to the bottom of it and is talking with the women that the lighthouse keepers have left behind. In two cases, they are wives, now widows, and in one case, a girlfriend. So there's a kind of a lot going on. Um, I'm enjoying it so far, but as I said, there is a lot going on. There are a lot of perspectives here. You have the perspectives of the three women, and then you have the perspectives of the three men back in 1972. Um, so basically for a 300, 330 page book, you have six POVs, which to me is risky. I feel like you can potentially not develop any of the characters well when you have to develop all of those characters at once. Um, so that's kind of my concern at this point. Helen, one of the wives, is really interesting and Jenny just seems really bitter in comparison and there's sort of some sort of... I don't know if it's the chickens outside making that noise but there's like a knocking so excuse me. Um, but Jenny, the other wife, seems to have some sort of rift with Helen. So like, despite the fact that they are kind of in this together, they're not in this together. Um, and then we're also getting to know the three lighthouse keepers or light keepers that have been lost. We don't know why, because again, it's this huge mystery and there's all sorts of theories and conspiracies and stuff like that. But so far it's interesting. Um, I'm liking the tone they're setting with the lighthouse keepers actually on like the lighthouse in this remote location in I think it's Cornwall in this book so not Scotland. Um, there's something about it that is really intriguing. I'm less so interested in the women which is weird for me because it's usually the women's stories that I'm most drawn to but I think it's partly the writing style when it comes to the women that is just kind of weird. They're not using traditional dialogue. It's kind of just like conversation dumped into paragraphs as in you're hearing one-sided conversation. You're hearing them answering or speaking to the author, but you'd never hear the author asking them the question. So it's kind of like hearing one side of a phone conversation, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I'm not as keen on that. But as I said, I'm about 100 pages into it. I'm going to take a break, go into town, um, and then probably come back and try to read the rest of this today. I figure if I break it up, if I read 100 pages, do some other stuff, come back, do 100 more pages, do some other stuff, do that I should be able to finish it today, which would be great because that would mean that I've read two books in two days. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to go. Um, as you can see, I'm in the living area. I still love that painting there. Like, it is so cool. I want one. I have no idea where I'd put one, but I want one. Um, so, yeah, I will check in with you guys later this afternoon. Have a good one. <laughs>
back from my little trip into town and firstly don't mind the ambiance you will likely hear chickens clucking because they're like literally out this window over there um so just get used to the barnyard noises <laughs> in this vlog nothing i can do about it um but as i was saying i did go into town and it was so so cute it's essentially just one street um but it gave me like college town vibes um which i live for because that was part of why i enjoyed my college experience so much is having that little small town vibe within the community and so yeah it was absolutely fantastic um so yeah i figured that i would go ahead and show you guys a little bit of a haul primarily because the majority of it is books so the bookstore is half moon books and it's this quaint little um used bookstore in town it has a very much like this i want to say like art gallery type vibe to it um it's not a huge bookstore but i did find some I did find some absolute gems. Um, so one of the books I ended up getting was Irene Nemrovsky's Demarche, Demarche, um, which is a short story collection. And, and if you are subscribed to my channel, then you know that Irene Nemrovsky is an author that I'm very, very interested in. Um, I read her book Sweet Frances last year, hoping to read another one this year um, during Wit Month, and so I couldn't pass this up. This looked fabulous. And then the other book that I got is Sometimes the Soul by Gioa Tempanelli. It's two no novellas of Sicily, so I think that it is also translated, but the cover really appealed to me for whatever reason, and considering I just had so much success with that very trippy <laughs> novella that I read yesterday, I figured why not. Um, I don't really know all that much about it, but it says that they're novella-length fables, one is about a baroness who locks herself up in the green palace only to have her seclusion interrupted by a parrot that flies in the window okay um and then the other is recasts beauty and the beast as the tale of a loving young heroine who escapes her poor family to live at the estate of signor sebastione so it sounds really cool, not gonna lie. I do think this must be a translation. Does it, it doesn't say anywhere? Does it say anywhere? It doesn't say if it's translated, so maybe it's not. I don't know, but whatever it was, it seemed really appealing to me. It's very, very short since obviously it is two novellas. And then the last book is Scottsboro by Ellen Feldman and I feel like this is going to be a really heavy but also a really timely book. Um, I have no idea when this was written but it seems like something that would be very interesting at the moment. So it's set in I think the 1930s in the south and these nine black boys um, are about to be arrested for having a fight with some white boys and then like for whatever reason or under whatever circumstances they're then accused of raping these two white women who appear and so it seems like the main character is going to be this journalist or someone who is basically trying to save the boys and prevent them from being put into the electric chair. So it seems like it's going to be really, really, really um, heavy and focus a lot on racism, the systemic racism in the South that we're still dealing with today throughout the United States. So when I saw this, I didn't know what it was about, but something about it resonated with me. So I grabbed a copy of this as well. So those were the 
the books that I ended up getting, but I also bought these cute glass straws. I couldn't resist. I, I mean, I could get these probably anywhere else, but there was this cute store, I think it's called Winnie. And they were selling these and a bunch of other like sculptural glass pieces. And so I figured why not? And then apart from food, I ended up getting some crystals. So I got these bits of fluorite, which I think are about our crystals for discernment, potentially, I don't remember. And then I also got this little one, which this is quartz, um, but I liked the shape of it. So I'm trying to see if I can pull it out of the paper, but I just really liked the shape of it and it stands on its own. So I thought that was cute. So those were kind of, those were the things I ended up buying from town. Um, I did get food, I ate lunch, I walked around an art gallery, um, I got ice cream and now I'm just back here. And I think the game plan is really to pour myself a drink, get myself situated, and try to read another 100 pages of Lamplighters. So I'm going to go and I will check in with you a little bit later. Hi there, good afternoon, evening. Um, I figured I should check in because I'm about two glasses into this. Um, and who knows if I will be able to be coherent if I wait any longer because I'm on vacation and there is another bottle of wine screaming for me to open it in the fridge. So hello, hi. <laughs> I really didn't do much today since I last checked in except read. I may or may not have taken a nap um, at some point. I can't really recall. I just know that at one point I was very groggy and lost like 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but I did read another 100 pages roughly of The Lamplighters. I'm pretty sure that if I pushed myself I could probably finish it tonight, which means I would have read two books in two days, but I'm on vacation. So there are no rules. There is no pressure. So odds are I'll probably finish it tomorrow morning when I wake up and do some reading. Um, but I don't think I like where the Lamplighters is going. Like, I don't know for positive or for certain that it is going in this direction. Um, but the like little nuggets of information that are being dropped based on what has happened in the lighthouse among the men in 1972 and kind of the revealing of secrets between the women that have been left behind. I'm not so sure I'm gonna like where this is gonna go, to be quite honest. Um, I'm gonna read the rest of it because at this point I'm like two-thirds in so I'm practically at the end in my mind. I know that math doesn't actually make sense but yes I feel like I'm almost there but yeah I'm I'm a little concerned about where this is going and I don't want to say exactly where I think it's going because that could potentially be a spoiler um but yeah that's that's kind of how I feel. Also I I talked about how I was concerned about there being so many POVs within the story itself. And I'm still a little concerned about that because I do feel like there are characters who are more like fleshed out and feel more real and three dimensional um, than others. But I don't know. I'm interested to see where it goes, but I'm also very, very like suspicious of where this is gonna go. So we shall see. Um, but as I said, I suspect that I will finish it either later tonight, which is doubtful. So probably first thing tomorrow morning, and then I'll pick up another book. I might switch over to one of the audiobooks 
that I have because that is one of the prompts that I need to do for the tarot readathon. Um, there's also a nonfiction book that I should probably start for the readathon as well. So we'll see. But in the meantime, I am going to continue to drink my wine and dance like nobody's watching because nobody is watching. Um, and I have my my 3-0 playlist, which I created, which is a like compilation of my favorite songs throughout my lifetime. And it is epic and such a bop but it's also literally all over the place. So I went from like pinnacle of Brandy fame in the 90s to like classic JT to Carly Simon to Amy Winehouse to when I stopped the playlist to film this clip, Gloria Gaynor. So I'm all over the place and not gonna lie, I'm having the best time. I am living the best life. So I'm gonna go continue to do that. At some point I'm sure I will get tired and pull out my lemon square that I bought earlier and sit down and watch Harlot. Which did anyone know that that show was based off of Haley Rubin or Haley Rubinstein's book? Whoever wrote The Five, I think it's based on what she wrote about Covent Gardens. I didn't realize that. I'm quite intrigued by it. I'm like six or seven episodes in. So I have a feeling that's where the rest of my night is going to be spent if the wine does not do me in and knock me out, which is, to be quite honest, a very, very good possibility. But anyway, if I don't check in with you guys again later tonight, which would probably be advisable because there's a very good chance I will be drunk AF and we don't need that on camera. <laughs> but if not, I will talk to you guys in the morning. Bye. Good morning. It is something to 11 on Sunday and I've been in bed and just finished the lamp lighters. And it didn't go where I was concerned that the ending would go. Um, but I don't know that I would say that I was overly enthusiastic or felt that the ending was great. I kind of feel like it was a cop-out. It really did turn out to be more of like a mystery book, which is not something I'm very familiar with or that I would say I'm particularly drawn to than I anticipated based on kind of the legend behind the three lighthouse keepers that disappeared in the 1900s. I thought this would kind of have more like supernatural elements in it than it did. They kind of tried to weave aspects of the supernatural into it, but I don't feel that it was particularly well done in that regard. I feel like it was more just like fodder that got added kind of after the fact. It didn't I wouldn't say it didn't feel intentional, but it, like, it, it just missed the mark for me on that point. But yeah, overall, I feel like it was kind of like a dark mystery with a lot of red herrings kind of built into it. For me, I feel like the strongest parts of the book were definitely when the men were on the lighthouse, um, the maiden in 1972. I feel like the atmosphere build up there was really nice and well done and I feel like those characters were pretty strong. I would say that Arthur and Bill were probably stronger than I would say of Vince um, but there was something about it that felt very gothic, very atmospheric and I liked it. Um, I was less so <laughs> enamored with the storyline in 1992 with the women that are now left behind. Um, to me, it just wasn't as interesting or as compelling. Um, I think Helen, for me, was probably the more interesting of the three women. And Michelle probably needed to be fleshed out more. She doesn't get a lot of page time, so perhaps that's why. And like, Jenny was interesting to to a degree, but I also don't necessarily like the way that she ended up being characterized. And because of how she's characterized, 
she feels very kind of one di dimensional to me. Like there doesn't feel like there's that much to her. She's just kind of at face value, um, in my opinion. I don't know if everyone will agree with me, likely not, but that's how I felt. At the end, I think that it's gonna be three stars for me. There were things that I enjoyed about it, um, but there were also things that I didn't. This isn't a book that I would necessarily reread or want to reread, so for me it was just kind of okay. So yeah, I, at this point I've now completed two books since I've been in my little cottage getaway. I had to figure out what book to read next because I do have quite a stack with me and also audiobooks that I can select from. I think right now though I need to figure out what my day is going to look like because it is very wet. It stormed basically all night which was awesome because it was just you just had like the ambiance of the rain and the thunder and the lightning and it was perfect um, but now it's drying out so maybe I'll go into another neighboring town maybe I will just sit and read again for however long once I decide what book to read. Um, but I will check in with you guys once I've figured that all out and I'll see you later. actually since I got back from a little adventure to yet another bookstore. Um, I've actually eaten lunch, I've eaten dinner, I've read all that jazz since I last checked in, um, but I did actually go across the river to another town that I am very intrigued by and I had heard from a co-worker of mine that they had a book bar called Roughed Drafts and I was very intrigued by this idea. So it's essentially part bookstore, part cafe, part like pub or bar. So you can go and browse for books and then you can also like order yourself a pint or a really fancy coffee. I did neither because I don't like coffee or tea and I was driving, but I did get a very delicious ginger beer and this vegetable curry like savory pie thing for lunch which was delicious um and i did leave with a book because when do i ever not leave with a book when i go into a bookstore but i ended up picking up elizabeth gilbert's the signature of all things which is one of her um novels that i really have never heard about she's famous for eat pray love i feel like City of Girls was pretty big when it first came out and also there's that creativity book that I can picture the cover but I can't remember what it's called but this book definitely stuck out to me it looks like it's going to be somewhat historical fiction um, focused on this really brilliant woman living in the early 19th century and I think she's like a naturalist or a botanist of some sort so love a woman in science, love that sort of historical background, um, but it definitely sort of got me curious, I'd have to say. The moment I saw it, I was kind of done for, like this was just going to happen. So I did pick up this. I didn't buy anything else apart from food, and there's a fly in here, but considering I bought a few books yesterday, I have a never-ending TBR at home. I felt like four books for this short like weekend getaway was plenty but I also wanted to check in because I did also start reading War Queens by Jonathan W. Jordan and Emily Ann Jordan which is the book 
that I am using for my nonfiction prompt for the Tarot Readathon, and this was also the book that was picked at ra random. Basically, I sent Katie from over at Katie Reads and Rants a picture of my physical TBR of nonfiction and was just like, pick one. So this is the one she picked. I'm not far into it at this point. I'm about 60 or so pages and that fly is gonna, I'm gonna end that fly. Let's just put it that way. Um, but I'm not very far. I'm about 60 pages in. It's a little over 300 pages long. It seems like it's going to be a case of kind of a primer on these different war queens. So essentially each chapter is like a mini biography on these women throughout history that like led people into battle or like had sort of military minded campaigns and political positions. Not all of the women in here are queens in the literal sense, but up until the point where I am, which is Bodicea of the Britons and the Celts. The women it covers are really interesting. There were a few that I had never heard of. Bodicea and Cleopatra were two of the four that I knew of, but the other two were new finds to me. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's the most riveting read. It feels a little academic to me. And because you're not getting like full-fledged biographies, these are just really like single chapters on these women you can't really flesh them out like in comparison to something like the Catherine the Great biography that I just read like this really doesn't compare but it is a great way to learn about some more women throughout history that I might not have otherwise so I'm going to keep reading it I do think this is going to be a little bit of a slower read for me though just because it does kind of have this sort of more academic writing style um, which is not necessarily a bad thing I just wouldn't say that this is necessarily going to be a page turner so I got a ways to go I would like to I think finish this before I head home Tuesday morning so I do have my work cut out for me so yeah as for the rest of my evening I'm kind of planning to keep it pretty low-key I've already eaten dinner um, so I think I'm going to continue to watch a few episodes of Harlot, which has me hooked, like so, so hooked. I love Leslie Manville, who's in it, and um, who's the actress that played Sybil in Downton Abbey? She's in it, and she's also a delight. So probably going to watch more of that and just kind of relax a little bit, do my skincare, have another bubble bath, drink another glass of wine or two. Um, partly because around 9.30 tonight we actually have a tarot readathon reading sprint, so I kind of want to make sure I'm able to stay awake for that, um, which, which should be a lot of fun, but I'm not usually a nighttime reader, so it's always, it's always a bit of a, like, a bit of a task, a bit of a thing, but I think tonight what I will read is actually the audiobook for Circe because that is the one prompt I haven't started yet for the Tarot Readathon, which is to listen to an audiobook. And I feel like that could be a really fun one. Everyone raves about that book as it is. So I think I'm going to start that during the reading sprint, see how far I can get. Doubt I will finish it during this long weekend just because I think it's like a 12 hour audiobook. And unlike a lot of people who can listen to audiobooks at two times the speed or faster, I listen to it at a plodding 1.25. So don't think I will finish it over the next day and a half or so, but I think I can make a nice little dent in it while also trying to finish this up before I head home. And yeah, that's, that's really all I have to say. As of right now, Harlot, I'm on season two, episode one, so you'll find me there watching that, drinking. I don't know if I'm gonna switch over to wine yet. Probably still gonna stick with the Coca-Cola, um, but I will definitely be eating either some lemon square or chocolate. It's dessert time, basically, in my little cottage. But I will check in with you all later. Bye. Hello, checking in, it is 
after eight in the morning. I don't know the exact time, um, but it is my final full day at this little cottage retreat, which is really upsetting because I've had a fabulous time just kind of unplugging, reading, watching TV, not really having to do any sort of adulting. Um, but all vacations must come to an end, unfortunately. I really haven't done any reading since I last checked in, except for Circe. I did listen to about 25% of that audiobook yesterday while either in the bubble bath or on our tarot readathon reading sprint. But to find out my thoughts on that, you'll need to tune in for another reading vlog that will be coming soon hopefully. Um, it's in the works at least. So you'll see it soon. But I haven't read any more of The War Queens. And right now I just don't feel like doing any reading this morning. So my plan is to continue watching the documentary that I'm watching on BritBox and then probably switch over to Harlot um, because I've been having a grand old time with that. But in the meantime, I do have breakfast. I got myself a Greek yogurt. I got myself a white nectarine. I've got myself orange juice. So I'm just gonna have a lie-in and then start reading whenever I feel right, like reading, like no pressure. Like the whole point of this vacation was to take all pressure off myself. So that's exactly what I intend to do today. But I did wanna check in and say, hi, hello, how you doing? And I will check in again a little bit later when I've made some reading progress, I imagine. But hope you're having a fabulous day. Good morning. It's like 8 a.m. and it's farewell day to the cottage, so I'll actually be heading back home in the next couple of hours. I honestly have not done a ton of reading since I last checked in with you guys. I spent most of yesterday watching Harlots. I think I got through the entire second season and then three episodes of the third and final season. And that was just what I felt like I was in the mood to do. Like I am very much a proponent of read when you want to, don't read when you don't want to. Um, if that makes sense. I don't know if that made sense. But essentially I was not in the mood to read yesterday, so I just didn't. Um, but I did read for a little bit this morning. I was reading more of War Queens. So I'm now page 128 according to where this book is opened and I just read the section on Katerina Sforza who is one of my historical girl crushes back when I wanted to be a novelist. Like I feel like almost every bookworm goes through that phase. Like I wanted to write a novel about Katarina Sforza. Um, and the section was actually probably one of the larger ones that I've read so far. And just reminds me of how badass Katarina Sforza was. But to be honest, I'm not entirely in love with this book. It does feel a little bit dry to me. It's taking a really long time to get through the sections and I'm kind of surprised by the overall lack of diversity with the War Queens that it's talking about. I don't feel like there are that many that aren't within Europe at this point and also I was kind of surprised by um, a few character, few women who were left out like Isabel of Castile does not have a chapter which I found very strange considering I remember being in Spain and remember like tour guides basically saying that she wore the pants in that relationship so Isabel of Castile not having a section is very curious to me but I think one of the biggest criticisms at this point apart from it being a little bit dry in my opinion um is just that it doesn't seem that diverse and that it's just really focusing on women from um, Europe slash Eurasia maybe um, but even so that's a very small part of what the book is covering but so far I haven't seen anyone from Africa um, or Asia or um, South America anywhere like that and I'm sure they had queens so yeah, that would be my biggest quibble with it. Yeah, it's it's just a little bit dry. I think part of it is just because 
it is this primer on these women so it is really trying to focus on the particular like war aspect of their personalities and lifetimes so it doesn't have a lot of the other color that you would get from a full-fledged biography on any of them. I'm gonna keep reading it. The next one, the next section is actually on Elizabeth I, who is another one of my historical girl crushes, so hopefully that proves a little bit more interesting, but that's really all I've read so far. As I said, I'm on page 128 of this book. It's about 300 something pages long. So I have a feeling I'll finish it by the end of this week, but definitely not in time to wrap up this vlog. But yeah, with that, I do think that I am going to wrap up this vlog. There really isn't more reading updates to share. I'm going to go eat a quick breakfast, finish packing, get myself dressed and hit the road. So I don't anticipate any more reading happening today. But I do hope that you enjoyed this little vlog of my cottage getaway and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe and i will see you next time